so I worked on Star Trek and Grant knew that I loved Star Wars, you know, because I probably just bent his ear because he did Star Wars. And uh, Lauren Peterson at ILM was looking for another model maker to come up there on Empire Strikes Back for a little while. So uh, Grant gave him my name and I got the job and went up. The, it was at the Kerner Optical Company, which is the building to, to um, try to camouflage the place. It was a, in a building on Kerner Avenue in San Rafael. They, they put a little sticker that said Kerner, Kerner Optical on the window and the front door, you know, it was a glass door. But, you know, there were fans there, you know, you'd see them outside. They already knew, they knew what it was. But So anyway, I worked there for a few months towards the end of, of 79, and most everything was built. I'm not even sure why he needed somebody, but I was happy to be there. You know, the, uh, the Star Story was built, the huge one, it was beautiful. I, everything was. It, was. it was a phenomenal shop. And I sort of built the basic structure for the hospital ship, and I built little, uh, little pods that are that are shot out of the the opening shot of, of Empire, the pods that get shot of the Star Destroyer that have the that sort of spidery robot. I built those, those are tank parts, you know, and and I maintained stuff on the on the, on the set, you know. I became sort of the set guy, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So again, I had a, a great time working on that, and I met. Dennis Muren and Richard Edlin that were the, the main DPs and all the model shop guys. And You know, we did Star Wars, and uh, Don Dykstra and uh, Grant McCune said, you know, well, there's, there's more work here. You know, it's, uh, doing, we'll do another film. And, and uh, in a way, John and I, our, our money situation was really tight, you know. So, uh, yes, that was, he, they were confident of that, but... Uh, uh, we were a little bit dubious and all that kind of stuff. So we had a backup plan, you know. But then John Dykstra was absolutely right that, you know, there was more work than you could shake a stick at out there. So we started doing the same kind of thing with Galactica Cause, because there never was a, there wasn't a full-on promise that we would do another Star Wars. But as Star Wars became really successful, we were no longer actually affiliated with Lucasfilm. We were using the same equipment that we'd created for. It was being leased back from Lucasfilm. But as time went on, that summertime went into fall, it was like, oh, you know, there's going to be, something's going to be happening here. And, uh, but uh, he, there were, I think there were six of us that they asked, six that they asked to head up north uh, to start over again. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a done deal because I, I remember thinking, Jesus, that's going to be really hard with only six of us to start having to hire everybody from up north to go to a building that has no walls. Uh, really, as the first ILM didn't either when they started out, you know, everything had to be built, walls and staircases and that kind of thing. But, uh, I mean, it was the same place that we then occupied it from 77, 78 till um, 06 or something like that, you know, so that's a lot of number of years. So eventually it got air conditioning and it got a heater and, you know, got more bathrooms and, I mean, we'd even have meetings where people say, well, what, what needs to happen? And said, we've got to have more bathrooms. You know, there's only two bathrooms in this whole building. You stand, you stand at the door with four people in line, you know. And we're, you know, we're making a movie. We've got to have another bathroom. I said, oh, okay. We'll get another bathroom put in. <laughs> it's hard, hard to imagine things like that, you know, for people who worked outside of it. I remember how to do Darth Vader's ship. We had that long, you know, nine-foot... Uh, cantilever really thin and uh, I, I proposed I asked for three different ideas and we'd pursue a little bit of each of these three ideas and which one would be the best you know and not that we necessarily voted on it like that but there was a consensus so that we should head this direction. The big white star destroyer uh, we had uh, air hoses hooked up to cool the lights because they're halogen lights you know they're very hot and it would melt uh, parts of the ship Expe especially the fiber optics there was about 150,000 uh, fiber optics in that particular ship. Was it 150,000 or 100? I can't remember. But a lot anyway. But the cameraman hated the hissing all the time. You know, they wanted to have the ship lights on so they could do light tests and all that kind of stuff. Uh, whereas their instructions were to like, well, save the lights, you know, to the last minute and hook them on, but never, never hook them up without the air because they, they will self-destruct. And I remember one, uh, it's probably an evening, um, 
I think it was Pat Sweeney or something, calls up and says, you know, there seems to be something incredibly wrong with the ship. You know, the lights, the color of the light has become much yellower, more amber and less luminous than it was before. And we don't like it. You know, it's uh, come on down and uh, fix it, you know. I went down there and they had turned on the lights. Of course, they had, because they didn't like the hissing, you know, they would try to run the lights with it, and it just melted the... Uh, the bundle of fiber optics was probably, you know, that was 100,000 uh, fiber optics. And so they were mid-shot doing this long and elaborate shot. So they didn't want us to move the model or anything like that. So what we had to do was we unscrewed the panels, you know, the re removable panels. And I made a, uh, we made up a table for Paul Houston because he was kind of the, expert in that kind of thing and we made this long finger that put him on his back with like a pillow and he he worked up underneath of the ship like that without jarring the ship and basically had to file and plane off the melted face off the uh, the fiber optics and remount it back up again so they could you know the next night they could uh, shoot it uh, with the proper lighting but it was like this big amber gob you know on the front of this thing so that happened, and a number of things like that happened. I mean, I, uh, we, we went down and repaired things, but it was never, uh, that was probably the most extreme one, because it was, it even would have been less extreme had they let us just take the model, you know, out and pull the things down and grind, grind, grind with a grinder or something like that, but they didn't want the model moved or touched or anything like that.